Hi everyone, this is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for August 26th, 2024. It's the time of week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jeff and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython, which is a version of Python designed to run on tidy computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing your hardware at adafruit.com. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday, which, by the way, it does next week. Uh, in the notes document, there's a link to a calendar, so you can check that uh, online or add it to your favorite calendar app and see the time in your local time zone. We also send a couple of notifications a week about the meetings in Discord. Uh, so if you want to hear when the meetings are happening, you can also be ask someone to add you to the CircuitPythonista Discord role. There is a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. Uh, folks have contributed to that uh, document beforehand. If you're watching this after the fact, there will be a link in the show notes and uh, with timestamps so that you can skip around to the part of meeting that interests you the most. After each meeting, we will uh, post and pin a link to the next notes document so you can add your thoughts throughout the week. And of course, if you want to participate but can't attend live, you can leave your hug reports and status updates in the document, and the host will read that out during the meeting. This meeting has five parts. Uh, next up after this intro, we've got community news, a, a little peek into the uh, Python and hardware, excuse me, Python and microcontrollers newsletter curated by our own Anne Barella every week. Following that is the state of the CircuitPython, the libraries in Blinka, where we look at some statistics, mostly from GitHub, that gauge the strength and health of the project. After that are the sections where y'all get to participate. With Hug Reports, we offer an opportunity for you to highlight good things folks in the community are doing, whether that's on uh, Discord, GitHub, forums, or beyond. Uh, and then, the true meat of the meeting, status updates. We would love to hear what you are up to, and we'll all talk about what uh, we're up to, have done over the last week or so, and what we hope to accomplish over the next week, talk about some of those goals. And then the last part, which is uh, an optional part, but I think we have some topics today, is called In the Weeds. If we need a little community discussion around a topic, this is the place to, uh, to do it, and that covers how the meeting will go. So with that, I will move on to community news. I'll tell you a little bit more at the end about where these items come from, uh, but I just picked out a couple of items that I want to mention for you. CircuitPython 9.1.2 as well as 9.2.0 Alpha 2351 have been released. Uh, so 9.1.2 is the latest bug fix revision of CircuitPython and is a stable release. Uh, it corrects a few small bugs. As well, 9.2.0 Alpha 2351 is an alpha release for the next stable version 9.2. It has known significant bugs and will require further additions and fixes before the final release of 9.2.0. And there are some links to Adafruit as well as GitHub to find out more information about that. Then um, I skipped over all of the RP2350 projects uh, because that's cool, and everybody's hearing about it, and I wanted to highlight some of the other items. Um, I just got back from some long flights, so it was really interesting to me to see the project of the week, an LED matrix flight tracker. Uh, maker and developer Wesley G. Mitchell has put together a Raspberry Pi and Python-powered flight tracker that outputs to a custom matrix display. And there was even some coverage on Tom's hardware of that project. Next up, a Wii Nunchuck BLE adapter was posted uh, to the Adafruit Playground by, um, I'm not sure who, let's see, I guess squid underscore JPEG is the name of the author of that one. Um, there is a lot more in the weekly Python on Microcontrollers newsletter curated by Ann Barella for Adafruit. It is a community-run newsletter emailed every Monday. You can check out the archives on adafruitdaily.com slash category slash circuit python and the front page of adafruit daily is also the place to subscribe the aim of the newsletter is to highlight the latest python and hardware related news from around the web including circuit python python and MicroPython developments um, did you make some cool python news did you run into some cool python news we've got a couple of ways for you to contribute 
Uh, so it gets covered in the newsletter. First up, you can edit next week's draft on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. You can also email your hot scoop to cpnews at adafruit.com and uh, you can also tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython. And uh, we try to monitor Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X for uh, those tagged social media posts. But those first two are really your surest uh, methods for getting your article or your project into the hands of Anne. And yeah, so one more call to action. Uh, these news items, uh, the, the newsletter goes out every Monday morning and uh, we would love to see you subscribe by going to adafruitdaily.com. We don't uh, mix that with your Adafruit account. We keep it private um, and just want to tell you about cool stuff. And that is community news. Next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Our uh, bot called Adabot runs a report every night that covers approximately seven days of statistics. And then we report on those statistics and drill down a little bit. We've also got a few statistics that come from uh, PyPI and PyWheels, and we'll cover those when we get to them. So uh, overall, the top numbers are our GitHub activity with 19 pull requests merged from 13 authors. Some names that are less familiar to me are Tim Deschant, um, Indomitable Swan, and, and Knack5. Uh, all these other people I've seen around, but thank you, Sam Blenny. Uh, it's good to see you contributing. Oh, E. Haggerty, I don't recognize. So anyway, uh, reviewers-wise, uh, people leave reviews on pull requests, and some of those are in an official capacity as reviewer. And those four reviewers were uh, Dan, Scott, Foamy Guy, and Liz. So thank you to those reviewers doing the official Adafruit work, and thank you to everybody else who is able to look in on issues and pull requests and just comment and help us move things forward and create the best software that we can. Issues-wise, we saw a slight decrease in issues across the project with 14 issues closed by eight people and 11 opened by 11 people. So now we're gonna break it down into some sub parts. And uh, so I've asked Dan to read us some news about the core of CircuitPython. You ready, Dan? Yes, thanks, Jeff. Okay, so in the core that is in CircuitPython itself, uh, over the past week, we had 15 poll requests merged by nine authors, and there were three reviewers. Right now, we have 20 open poll requests, which fits on one page, which is nice. Half of those are drafts. Some of them are pretty old and are awaiting things like USB uh, product IDs and things like that. In the past week, there were six issues closed by three people and five opened by five people. Right now, there are 734 open issues. They're categorized by milestone. So for instance, we have six open issues for milestone 10.0.0, which are changes that we would make when we start working on CircuitPython 10. Um, there are 12 issues open for 9.1.x, 3 open for 9.2.0, 38 for 9.x.x, anything that's anything we want to fix sometime during the lifetime of 9. Um, 22 for library, 624 are long term, 16 are support, 14 are third party, and uh, we don't have any issues that are not currently triaged right now. So that's the core. Thank you, Dan, and thank you. I'm guessing it was you who kept on top of all that milestone assignment. Really appreciate that. Um, next up, we have got uh, Foamy Guy, or Tim, who's going to tell us about the libraries. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Uh, this section covers all of the CircuitPython libraries, which are all found on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Um, across all those libraries this week, we had four pull requests merged by four different authors. Um, and uh, three of those names were, were new or um, less frequent or just um, not familiar to me. So thanks to Indomitable Swan, uh, E. Haggerty, and Knack5IVE uh, this week, who again might be newer or less frequent contributors or just folks whose name uh, that I happen to have not seen as much. Um, we had three reviewers this week, uh, mostly the usual folks. Thanks to Dan, Scott, and myself for doing some reviews in library land this week. The Of the pull requests that were merged, the oldest one was 31 days, and the newest one was one day. 
Um, we have at the end of that seven days, that leaves us with 45 uh, pull requests that are open. The oldest one of those is 739 days. The newest one is one day. Um, in the past week, there were five issues that were closed by three people and five new issues opened up by five people. That leaves us with a total of 880 open issues across all these libraries. And there are 103 of those that are marked as good first issues, uh, which you would find listed out over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is the website where you should head if you are interested in getting involved in the CircuitPython project, um, particularly on the contributing and reviewing side of things. On that page, again, circuitpython.org slash contributing, you'll find a list of all the open PRs and open issues across all of the CircuitPython libraries. Uh, you can look through that list of open PRs, find something that is interesting to you or that you've got the hardware for, click through uh, to GitHub, take a look at the code in that PR. Um, if you do have the hardware for it, go ahead and uh, try to run it on your device and just leave a comment there on GitHub letting us know that you uh, looked it over and what you found and uh, how it went if you did try and run it uh, on the hardware. Once you get comfortable with that, we can get you uh, leveled up to leave official reviews on GitHub as well if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, and then conversely, over on the issues side of things at circuitpython.org slash contributing, you'll find a list of the open issues, including those uh, good first issues mentioned before. You can again click through to GitHub, uh, take a look at what the issue is, whether it's a bug fix or a new feature or anything like that. Uh, ha take uh, a try at implementing whatever that change is and submit your own PR with it. Uh, if you need help uh, with the process, we have a learn guide that covers the process of contributing with Git and GitHub. We also have folks who are around throughout the week who'd be more than happy to help you if you are trying to contribute but need help with any part of it. So uh, just come and join us on Discord, say hi, let us know what you're up to, and uh, ask if you need some help with any part of that. Um, in terms of the library uh, PyPI weekly download stats this week, we had 181,399 PyPI downloads across the 333 libraries. Uh, the top 10 list is here in the notes doc, and the, uh, the new library in the bundle this week is the Prompt Toolkit library, which was made a little while back, but just recently added. Um, and that's what we have got for libraries. Thanks. Thank you for that, Tim. And uh, Melissa, are you able to join us and talk a little bit about Blinka? I am. Hello. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week we had zero pull requests merged. There are currently four open pull requests amongst all the Blinka related repositories. And there were th three closed issues by three people and one open by one person, leaving a net of 102 open issues. There were 18,097 PyPI downloads in the last week, 15,912 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 146 supported boards. And that's it. Thank you. That wraps up the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, and brings us to our first community participation section called Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start and then we'll go down the document, uh, giving everyone a chance to participate. If you're text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read notes to you. I'll read the notes when I get to them in the list. And if I do happen to accidentally bypass somebody, please just drop a note into the text chat and I will circle back to get you. And that would also go if you didn't have a chance to put in your notes beforehand. All right, uh, so I'll begin and I have a group hug that I wrote up beforehand. Um, I've been a little bit out of touch, so I don't have a lot of specifics, but I do want to add a second hug for Dan because I'm always really excited to see when we merge updates from MicroPython and by all indications, he did a bang up job of that. So thank you, Dan. And uh, Dan is up next, and then I'll read some notes from people. All right, thank you, thank you, Jim. Um, so uh, thanks to Toddbot, who started looking at um, the RP20. Somebody said that RP2350 Touch IO wasn't working, and uh, Toddbot did some measurements uh, with a scope that um, indicated a certain problem, which I'll discuss in more detail in status reports, but it started me um, on a journey to characterizing what has seems to be a significant hardware problem with RP2350. I'm not the only person who's seen this, but I sort of verified it independently. 
So thanks also to Gadgetoid from Pi Moroni, who found the same problem, and we've been communicating about that. Uh, thanks to Liz for testing issues with the C6 build, and I'll have more about that. And welcome back, Jeff. Thank you. Okay. I will read some notes from DJ Devon, and the next up after that is Foamy Guy. So DJ Devon 3 writes a hug to Foamy Guy and E. Alpicanon for help with a pre-commit reuse error. One for Foamy Guy for live stream on making a circular GUI for the M5 stack dial. And for developers for the recent IDF 5.3 merges, MicroPython 1.22.2 updates, updates for the upcoming RP2350, and general bug fixes on many different boards. All right, Foamy Guy, what you got to tell us today? All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, hug reports for me first. Um, welcome back uh, to you, and thanks for sharing uh, some of those amazing photos with us. Um, thanks to Tyeth for linking me to the bootloader um, that I needed that I was looking for for a new device that I got over the weekend. Uh, thanks to DJ Devon 3 for a pointer to the touch driver that works uh, for the screen on that device. And that's what I've got for this week. Thanks. Thank you. Next up, I've got some notes from Liz that I will read. And after that is Melissa. So Liz writes, thanks to Dan H for diagnosing and fixing the NeoPixel I squared C power pin issue I came across on the ESP32 C sex feather, as well as a hug to Melissa for looking into various web serial editor issues and her work on the editor so far. All right, uh, and maker Melissa, we have reached you in the big list here. Okay, um, yeah, I just wanted to give a hug to Liz for doing some debugging on the CircuitPython code editor and web serial uh, ESP tool and a group hug to everyone else. Thanks. All right, I've got some notes from Sam Blenny who writes, thanks to Tanud and Dan H for helping, for help with getting tools set up to do espressive debug builds. And uh, E.L. Pekenen, please go ahead and read your hug report. I can't hear you. If you'd like me to, oh, there I hear something. Go ahead. Um. Maybe I should just go ahead and read it out. How about that? Um, I wanted to say hello to Scott, Dan, and Jeff for what I just said, uh, typing issues on Discord and very useful and fast uh, feedback. Thank you. All right, I was having a little trouble understanding that, so I'll just go ahead and read it out as well. E.L. Pekenen wrote a hug report to Tanut, Dan, H., and Jepler for help slash feedback on typing-related questions and problems. And to round out the section, I will read notes from uh, Scott, or Tanut, who has a hug report for Discord helpers for identifying a user with a dangerous project. And that completes hug reports. Moving on to status updates. Status updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start and then we'll go through the document in order. When I call on you, take a couple of moments to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide a quick tip or trick uh, relevant to what people are talking about. But if it's anything longer than a sentence or two, we would prefer that we move that to in the weeds. And with that, uh, I will get started. Uh, so you may have noticed I haven't been around for a little while, and that's because I just returned from four weeks in Africa, visiting the countries of Kenya and Tanzania. Or uh, actually, it turns out in English, they say Tanzania. So that was one thing that I learned. And it was really magical to go on safari and see animals in the wild that I'd previously only seen in zoos. Um, and in the notes document, there is a link to a photo album from my trip, if you care to take a look at that. All right, next up is Dan. Hello again. All right. So um, as Jeff mentioned, I finished uh, merging MicroPython version 1.22 into CircuitPython, that's in the 920 alpha 2351. And I just started merging uh, version 1.23, which is the last, which is the most recent uh, numbered release of MicroPython. 
So I'll see. I don't know how long that will take, but it's not doesn't look to be as big as the other merge. Uh, I released CircuitPython 9.1.2 last Wednesday because there were some C6 uh, ESP32 C6 pin changes. And I also, as mentioned, released uh, 920 beta 2351 just to catch up on 2350 changes and also to add some 2350 boards. And there were a few bug fixes there too. However, after the 912 release, Liz found out that uh, 912 uh, still did not fix a problem on the ESP32 C6, which was that the uh, power control for NeoPixel and I2C was not coming on automatically when the board came up. So um, there'll be a 913. There's a fix for that. And it also, that was a sort of a more general bug, and it might actually fix some flakiness on some other boards, though we haven't had reports of that. Um, another thing that I did in the build process was that I made it so that uh, merged PRs that are to uh, branches that end in point X, like 9.1 point X, are now going to be uploaded to the AWS S3 builds directories. So uh, you'll be able to get artifacts easily uh, for um, stable releases as well as main. And there's a couple of examples of that, at least one already in, the, um, in S3. And finally, um, as I mentioned, uh, there's this uh, rather bizarre RP2350 hardware bug. Um, what happens is that if you have an input pin and you pull it high and then you take away the high, it still thinks it's high, even if there's nothing connected. And you can actually measure 2.3 volts or so at the pin with a voltmeter. And if you put a weak pull up on that to pull it back down, it still says high. It gets latched at two something volts. Um, there was an erratum of that's with this in the RP2350 data sheet, but it's sort of a more specific case, and it actually seems to be more, ge more general than that. So this is a kind of a serious problem. It, it makes things, some things difficult may, or maybe impossible. There may be workarounds, we're not sure. I opened an issue about it. And there's a link in the uh, notes document for that. I opened an issue with Raspberry Pi about it. Other people have seen the same thing, as I mentioned, somebody from Pi Moroni. And so we'll see uh, what they have to say about this. And that's it. Thank you, Dan. Uh, before you go, is there like any big user visible differences for MicroPython 1.22 or 1.23, or is it more in the behind the scenes? I don't think there are any user visible changes except maybe some minor bug fixes. Yeah, there's no, there's no change in the API. OK, thank you. Uh, all right, I have notes from DJ Devon 3, and then after that, we'll hear from Tim. So, uh, DJ Devon 3 writes finished a proof of concept for a motion activated liquid soap dispenser, waiting for some parts to make a much smaller version. I intend on writing a playground note on the pros and cons of foam versus liquid peristaltic pumps and DC motor feather wing versus L911H motor driver chip with CircuitPython. Due to a distributed attack on the Adafruit forums on Friday, Adafruit shared their service status page which uses an uptime robot API. I dug into the API and quickly made an Adafruit requests example for Adafruit status. For services that offer an API such as Adafruit IO MQTT broker, it could be useful to check the status of the service prior to use. And next up is Tim and then maker Melissa. All right, thank you. Uh, last week I did some researching on the MQTT protocol around the uh, thing they have called the last will, which is like a disconnection sort of functionality. Um, there was a PR that someone had proposed that was basically changing some types and argument names, excuse me, to match one of the other functions <clears throat> that had the same concepts in them. Excuse me, sorry. Um, I created a rotary select uh, display IO widget, which is published on GitHub. There's a link here if anyone's interested in that. Um, I built it for the M5 dial, which is a nice like circular screen um, with the rotary encoder knob that goes around it. 
So it fits real nicely on that device, but it, the, uh, the library can be used um, on other devices as well. I also made a, an example that runs on a fun house and uses the buttons um, to demonstrate the, the capability of it. I found a really nice set of circle icons um, that I used in that rotary select, um, and I wrote up the, their vector icons, and they're very permissively licensed. Uh, so I ended up writing a playground page, which is also linked here if anyone's interested in it, that shows the process of resizing those icons and then uh, exporting them and converting them for use um, in CircuitPython with the image load library. Uh, so if anyone's interested in that, it's links here in the docs for it. Um, I submitted a few more libraries to swap, uh, a few more PRs rather, to swap some libraries over to Ruff. Um, the ones that I've had set up locally for testing and review, uh, I went ahead and made those changes and submitted them as well. Um, and then outside of CircuitPython, I've been trying to learn about MongoDB lately. Um, and one of the things I did to practice working on it was uh, build a user authentication framework, a very, very basic one. Um, but it does store the passwords as hashes rather than plain text, uh, which one of the examples I found first did not, which kind of inspired me to make my own example for this. And I published a, a YouTube video with that, uh, if anyone's interested in the world of Flask and MongoDB. Uh, but that's what I've been up to. Thanks. Thank you. All right, next up is Melissa, and then I have some notes to read from Sam Blenny. Uh, yeah, I worked on setting up a Helm Assistant development environment with Docker, and um, I worked on debugging some code editor issues, uh, the CircuitPython code editor, that is, um, and I fixed the Web Serial ESP tool for the ESP32C6 board, so that's good work now. I'm working on trying to get the C6 board working reliably with the code editor, and hopefully this will fix some issues with other boards. Uh, and I'm working on a Home Assistant integration to work with Adafruit IO. And that's what I'm up to. All right. Thank you. Next up, I have notes from Sam Blenny and Scott. And then after that, we'll go back to E. Alpha Cannon. Hopefully your mic is working better now. And if not, I am, of course, happy to read out those, uh, those notes. So Sam Blenny writes, I've been trying to get various gamepads working with CircuitPython as the USB host. So far, I've had good luck with an Xbox 360-style wired USB gamepad with the Max 3421E package on ESP32-S3. But for USB wireless gamepad adapters with more complicated USB behavior, it's not so easy. Currently, I'm learning to build expressive firmware with tiny USB debug logging enabled so I can explore USB host exception handling. Then I have some notes from Scott, who is out today uh, visiting with family. Uh, out Friday and Monday for a long Labor Day weekend. Uh, but Scott fixed a tough semaphore bug on the S3 Funhouse and will try to fix other bugs this week so we can get 920 out the door. And with that, E.L. Pekennon, if you would like to try your microphone again, uh, please do. Uh, hello, is it better now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, nice. Uh, sorry about that. No idea what happened to my headset. Well, this week I've been working on some typing. Uh, before I go ahead with the Blinka fixes, I wanted to get more familiar with the typing system in general. So I went to the list of open issues about that. And the first one was some library building on top of Bluetooth. But I couldn't get my Pi to run on that because the uh, Bluetooth library itself uh, was not typed or not fully. So I've been making a few PRs to get that uh, fixed because I also found some issues with that. And while doing that, I also improved slightly the code to generate uh, stops for boards and also a tiny documentation PR to ULab. So that's been quite some work this week. All right, thank you. And that wraps up status updates. Uh, contrary to what I said before, it looks like we do not have any topics for In the Weeds. So I will wrap up the meeting. Uh, this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for August 26th, 2024. I want to thank everybody who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, considering pur consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. 
And if you're outside of the States, there is a uh, link at the bottom of the shop page for international resellers. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held a day later than usual due to um, a U.S. holiday. So that will be on Tuesday, September 3rd at the usual time of 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And uh, just as a reminder, there is a calendar that you can view online or add to your normal calendar app so that you will see those in your local time zone. Um, and to be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPython Easter's role on Discord. This is the same role that you need to be in if you want to participate um, in the audio channel during the meeting. And with that, I uh, hope everyone has a great week and that we will see you next week. Thanks, everybody.